Oh, welcome to Railroads Online, and this is the first episode of the tutorials for the new spline system. Um, now, if you've come from originally playing the game on the main branch, um, you'll the first thing you'll need to do is open up your options and go to the controls and hit the reset input button at the bottom, and this will change all the new controls so that they're actually assigned to something because by default they will all be none. So that fixes it so that now they'll work in the game. And they can come back into the game and then when we press G, we have got a new selection here at the top which is track construction. All these ones here at the bottom are for the old splines. But this one here at the top is for the new splines. Now, we've got a few new options in here. We've got three foot rail number one, three foot rail number two, three foot rail number three, and just three foot rail number four. Now, what these first three are is you've got the rail with gravel groundworks, and there are three different depths of groundwork. So this is shallow, this is medium, and this is deep. And then number four is track with no groundworks underneath it at all. Then we've got the four switch types which we originally had and i do believe the pictures have actually been fixed they were incorrect in the in the first release but i think the pictures have actually been fixed to resemble what the correct track is and then we've got groundwork fill in three different depths here shallow medium and deep and now we have got two different kinds of wooden bridges. We've got the trestle bridges, we've got the pole bridges and the original steel bridges that we had, and then we've got stone wall. And these all come built with the track already on top of them, the same as these. These come with the track already built that's combined track. So we'll have a look at these ones here first and we'll run over here to the side of a hill so that we can see what they do. And if we put them here off the side, well, let me place it. And, okay, it won't let me place it. Let's try again. Oh, I see what it's trying to do. We've got to put down a second point. And if we lock the circle mode on, if we look up here into the menu on the right, there's a few options up here. You've got alignment, grid, circle mode, and incline. Now, if we lock the circle mode on, and it says our circle mode button is five. And now if we place the piece here, and there we go, now we can see that we've got that depth of groundwork for type number one. We'll come over and we'll do type number two so that we can see the difference in depth. Uh, let's get a spot where it's actually going to Show it. And put in a piece for that. And we can see the different depths there. And then we'll come all the way up the top of here if it lets me climb up. And we'll put the third depth one in. Up here. There we go. And now we can see on here, because we've got just a little bit shown here on the bottom, the three different depths of groundwork that we've got from shallow, medium, and deep up there at the top. Right, we'll get rid of those because we don't really need them. And you've only need to use the delete rail tool and it will remove the combined rail and Groundworks together. Okay, and then next in our list here are the bridge types. We have got regular old wooden bridge. This is the Tessel bridge that we originally had, but it's got new models. Now, something that they've also done on here is you've got... I actually thought there should be a drop-down menu on this. Obviously not. Only the bridge type 2 which bridge type two comes with a side walkway. 
which you currently can't walk on. But this one here comes in many different flavors. And if we change it here down to red and put a piece of that in, and then we've also got DR and GW in the Rio Grande, which is like a chocolatey brown color. And we also have Creosole. Which they actually look very similar. No, they look like they're almost identical. Okay, not sure what's going on there. Um, this is still only in beta. So some of these things might be subject to change. And this is old timber which it doesn't look very beaten up by its shape, but it looks beaten up in its texture. So we've got all these different styles of bridge to put down. And I think this one and the first one look the best. And well, the first one matches with the texturing you get for this type of bridge. And then of course, steel bridge has not changed. It is still the same steel bridge that we always used to get, but it comes with its rail decking already on top of it and then the last one of course is stone wall and it comes with its rail automatically built into it um, now saving has been enabled for the new splines but some of these splines and I think it is the this one here is not saving properly but that should be fixed in the next um, update so yeah we'll remove these you can actually just remove them all with rail now. You don't have to go to bridge and remove them with bridge. And the next thing we'll look at is how to use the circle tool. So if we put down a block here, and you can see I've got the circle tool on. If I turn it off, it will let me place a piece of track anywhere I want freehand. But what it's doing is that's basically going to make an S bend. So to make it not make an S bend, uh, rotate construction is on four and six. And you can see there that's turning it into a curve. And the more I turn it around, so that's 270 degrees, that should make a quarter turn circle if I put that down over here. Got to be big enough. If the cir circle is too small, it will not let you place it. And there we go. There is a quarter turn circle from pointing to the west to pointing to the south. And that should be a quarter, quarter of a circle. And the same thing is true again. Now we're pointing this direction, of course, so we're going to be building back this way. To make a straight track, the easiest way to make a straight track is to just turn on the circle lock with zero meters radius. And that makes a perfectly straight rail and it doesn't matter where I put the mouse pointer, it always makes the rail come out straight. Now to make a curve is exactly the same thing pull it out straight, and then we just tell it to set whatever curve we want. So, and our curve buttons are on here. Edit curve radius is four and six. And as you can see, as I'm moving it, it's going up in tens because I've got the grid set on 10. Now, if I set the grid on, and what is our button to change the grid? No, that's inclines. What's our button for grid? Number pad asterisk key. Ah, oh, there we go. That puts it on one increment, 10 increment, 50 increment, and 100 increment. So if we put it on 100 and start bringing down this radius, it will go down 
230 meters, which is the tightest corner we can place, and it'll go up and down in hundreds. Now, if we set it to 50, it'll go up and down in 50s. And if we set it to 10, it'll go up and down in 10s. And that's as simple as it is placing a curve. You don't have to worry about your lengths or anything. It will just continue placing the curve. And if we click that in and we go straight to our next piece, if we link it to the end, it will continue to build your curve all the way around on that exact same radius. And if we put another one here on the end, it'll continue the curve building it around. Now that's built a 50 meter radius curve and it's just kept on building it over three spines of track. Now the next thing that I want to show is how to link. And that is you've got to move the mouse over the area and basically move it around. And like this is difficult because the locomotive is here. And when it shows you the little link, and I can see the link, and even though it looks like it's not going to place there, the link's there, and it will snap to the end. And we're currently on circle mode, and we're at 50 metres, so we need to change this to 100 metres. Turn it back up until it gets to 1,000, and then it'll be on zero, and then that will place a straight bit of track on the end. And we can do the same thing on the rear of this little start track that the test porter sits on. And there's the link symbol and it went away. There it is. And once you get the link symbol, you can connect it and pull a piece of track out. Now, you do have to have some track connected to this start piece before this Betsy will move. It will not run past the end of any pieces of track and it cannot derail at the moment. Now, off the end of here, if we want to build again, we can put an S-Bend in and it will show the link symbol. As soon as you've got the link symbol, it's connected. We'll turn off the circle mode and it's going to show us that it wants to build 270 degrees backwards the other way. And well, we don't want that. So we'll turn it around to face and we need to put it on 10 degree increments so that we can line it up with the start which should be 90 degrees and that will line us up with here and because this is just freehand mode it will still make nice smooth curves and we'll just line it up nicely there just like that and lastly of course we'll put in one more piece here and we will turn circle mode on again, which forces us to build a straight line because it's the radius is set to zero. And we'll put in a straight line. And there we go, we build a nice straight line with a curved track, which goes from over here to the other side. And here is a problem with the splines. Because we're moving fast, I've actually sunk down into the splines. Now, to use the respawn key, you've got to click on it and hold on it until the little bar goes all the way up and then it will respawn you back at the start on the platforms at the spawn tracks. And it takes a little while to load, of course. And there we go, we're back at the start tracks again. And the only way to not have that happen is you've got to walk over the tracks because when you're using this and you can see we're going extremely fast at the moment, this is the dev walk speed. This probably needs to be taken out of the beta build at the moment because it's causing issues of falling through the track. Um, to make the new porter move, you can't actually get into it. There's no menu or driver UI to get into it. So the only way you can actually operate this test locomotive is by flipping the levers and currently the brake is off it's in zero on the reverser and we don't even get the little pop-up to show what everything is on and the regulator is currently on zero as well so if we put the reverser 
all the way to forward and we pull the regulator on, it will start to move. It doesn't need to be soaked with fire or anything. And of course, this is the brake to slow down, which it won't actually slow down when you've got too much regulator on. Oh, well, that was the wrong button. And there we go. We've gotten to the end of the line and the test porter just stops. It will not go any further and will not derail. And to go back the other way, we'll put it in reverse and away it goes. And we'll give it full speed. And it will get to the other end of the line that we've laid. And again, it will just stop. Now, if you've connected two pieces of track together and you haven't used that link, um, as an example, we will grab on here. And we will set this to 90. If it lets us, it's this one. Set it all the way around to 90. And we'll line it up so that it's going to line up here. So we're on that one. Like it'll link because I'm on replace mode. It will link to there. Now, if I put this on circle mode, it will not actually link to this track. Even though it looks like it's going to link, it won't. So if I click it in there, it looks like it's made a complete track, but I'm very sure that it actually has not. So what we'll do is we'll connect this piece of track back in onto that piece and we'll see whether or not we can actually run over and we will use our circle mode and we will put it on 100 and we'll pull all the way around to 30 and we'll pull all the way around this curve And to work out where you need to go on the curve, we just sort of line up where we're aiming and click in the next piece. And now we want to straighten up. Put it on 100. And straighten the track up. And what we might actually do here, because we can put in any old length we like, and let's just pull this out until it shows the link icon over this piece of track here, which it might not do until we turn the track around to face the right way, somewhere close to the right way. And there we go. And now it'll link up again. Okay, now we'll run the porter all the way around and see whether or not it makes it past this link here that did not actually connect. And we'll wait here for the locomotive to come back. Let it run around there all on its own. It currently cannot derail on tight corners. And well, the 30 meter corner is a open corner with the new splines. Um, it would be equivalent to a 60 meter corner with the old spline. So it is a quite an open curve. We do not need this curve here, so we'll delete this one. And we'll just wait for the test porter to come up here. And by rights, it should stop about right here. And not continue over this spline that did not properly connect. Okay, so that's something that's obviously been fixed. I wonder whether or not this one's been fixed then as well. So let's put down a... Oh, helps if we select the right ones. You must select the ones that are for the...
to the new splines. And turn on the circle lock. Put a short straight on the end. Now we will delete this back out of the middle. And we'll put another one back in facing backwards. Just to test to see whether or not it will move. And that's a problem. We have buried ourselves in the groundwork. If you place it over yourself, you will bury yourself. A bug that should soon be fixed. Let's try and move the porter backwards to start off with. And then forwards, and let's see if it goes past this joint, which was not actually connected. And it will not go past this joint. Ah. Jump in it. Better put some brakes on. Otherwise it won't stop. Now, to fix this... We actually have to take out this piece here and put it in again. Connect it to there. Turn off the circle lock so you've got free place. Move it up here until it shows the link icon. And you may need to align it so that it's somewhere close. Ah, put it on 10 and align it. There we go. See, as I got it lined up, the link button appeared. Now I can snap it in, and now it is actually connected. So when we grab in the test locomotive now, it should go over this joint. Now this is important with the new splines that every time you've got a connection, it must be a jointed connection. It will not function if it is a connection that is not a joint and there we go it'll run to the end of the line again and stop um, it will not connect unless you actually have a link connection it, even though it looks like it should go apart over it it will not do that anymore um, the wheels are no longer physics objects with the rails it actually runs on an invisible path down the middle of the line and if the link isn't there there's a break in that invisible path um, hopefully that'll get uh, worked out in some of the newer updates that if rails are close to each other they will automatically link together um, and well that's all that we have time for in this tutorial hopefully you've got a, an idea of what everything is here in the build menu now and the construction menu now that you can al align to the direction that you need to set the rail to start off with and then after you place it you can then align the piece of rail at the other end so that it faces the right direction and also the buttons for changing the grid and we can see that it's moving when i go to place it it's every 10 centimeters it'll move it and if i put it up onto 50 it will move every 50 centimeters or half meter and if i put it onto 100 it will space it every one meter on the grid and using the grids is handy for laying down parallel tracks also for snapping to make straight lines and yards and things like that and well that's that's pretty much all that we need to cover in this thanks for watching like and subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorial videos on the new splines